Welcome back to the Urban Farmyard where the city girl goes country. In today's video we are taking a look at how this little munchkin went missing and the tools that I used to track her down. Look at this gorgeous wee face. This is the face of Bella and this is the face of a girl who went missing three and a half weeks after she arrived to live with us. Now I used to work as a certified pet detective before being signed off work with chronic depression so missing pets are my specialty. So when wee Bella disappeared I got into action and started to deploy all of my technical skills to tracking her down. So how did she go missing? Well, Bella was on a four week mandatory lockdown when she arrived. The reason for that is cats see home as a physical place. So Bella saw her home as the home that she'd lived at for the first five years of her life. And coming to my house, she needed to learn that this was her new home. So I had her in lockdown for four weeks so that she could get used to the house and become familiar enough with it that she wouldn't disappear. That was all well and good, except in week three and a half, somebody discovered the cat door and popped out of the cat door in the middle of the night. She went into the garden, hopped a supposedly cat-proof fence, and she disappeared. Now, I initially didn't panic because she's super friendly. She was getting up to the four-week mark where she should have been safe here. But unfortunately, after three nights, she still wasn't home. So, these are the tools that I used to track her down. First thing I did was a flyer drop. Now what I usually do with missing pets is I actually produce huge A3 posters which are mounted on neon coloured card. But because we're on lockdown in New Zealand at the moment, I knew that a lot of people were not driving around and so they were unlikely to see my posters. So I opted instead to do coloured flyers. Now the reason why I did that is after three days of calling her on my property and not having her returning, I knew that it was very likely that she had gone further afield. Now we live in a rural area so it makes it more difficult to find cats because there's a lot of bush around here and there's not a huge number of houses. But I needed to figure out which direction she had gone in. So I got out and I did a flyer drop to absolutely every house in our area. Now that worked perfectly. Within an hour I had a message from a neighbour and I had a photograph of Bella saying that she had just been spotted near their property. Now that was about half a kilometre from us which is a long distance and realistically there was no way that I was going to be able to search between my house and that half kilometre distance. So that sighting gave me a really good point to start from. Unfortunately when I went down there Bella had already disappeared. She wasn't at the place that she had been seen. But I didn't panic. Instead what I did is I waited a couple of hours until nightfall. Now there are two reasons for that. The first is cats are crepuscular animals. They are most active at dawn and dusk. So by waiting till dusk or nightfall I knew that Bella was most likely to be out and about. Searching at night is also a lot easier with cats. You can go out with a flashlight and rather than looking for the cat itself you just need to look for shining objects because their eyes glow under the flashlight. So I went out that evening with my flashlight with some treats and some tasty food and I went hunting. Lo and behold as soon as I drove down the street and approached the point that she had been seen I saw a flash of white fur and I saw two shining eyes so I could see her immediately. But but unfortunately when I stopped the car and got out Bella panicked. She didn't recognize me and she bolted and I didn't see exactly where she bolted to. The reason is I was trying to navigate an electric fence without getting zapped and I didn't keep my eye on her the full time. So I continued to hunt and lo and behold I spotted her again. After about half an hour of calling and walking around with the flashlight I discovered her in bushes. Again though when I got to close she didn't recognize me she panicked and she bolted again at that point it became very clear that Bella was spooked and it wasn't going to be possible for me to just walk up to her pick her up 
and take her home. So instead what I did is I set a trap for her. Now we have a full video on trapping cats which I will link below um, but I set the trap basically because I knew that after three days of being away from home she was very likely to be hungry so I set, set the trap and waited. Unfortunately after night one she didn't go into the trap but that's okay I went back the next day I continued to search and I saw her yet again but yet again she saw me she panicked and she bolted. So what I did at this point is I went and retrieved Gina who is Bella's litter mate. Now Gina and Bella have been together since the day that they were born so they're very familiar with one another. What I did is I took Gina down and I popped her in a cage behind the trap and I covered the cage and the trap with a blanket which Gina had been sleeping on. So we have not only Gina but we also have a blanket that smells of Gina and we have Gina yelling at me to be let out of the cage. And I left her there for a couple of hours and went back again at nightfall to see if we'd managed to retrieve Bella. I went back again, again I could see Bella but she wasn't going near the trap. Now I wasn't that keen on leaving Gina there overnight, it didn't seem fair to leave her out at night in a cage in an area she wasn't familiar in so I brought her home again and I left the trap set up. But what I did is I created an audio recording of Gina meowing so it was a familiar noise that Bella would recognise and would hopefully draw her towards the trap. So I created that audio recording, I left it on my iPad on loop and I popped it in on top of the trap so that there was the sound of her sister calling her towards the trap. I went back the next morning and lo and behold still no Bella. Now this is not uncommon with missing cats. When they go missing they become disorientated, they become panicked and they don't behave as they normally would. Although Bella was likely to be hungry and there was tasty food in the trap, she wasn't hungry enough at this point to find the courage to go inside the trap. Another cat at that point did find the courage to go into the trap and I found a neighbour's ginger cat sitting in one of the traps having eaten all of the food. So at that point I did a number of things. One I set three traps in total so I put a trap in each of the places that I had seen Bella over the last couple of days. I set the trap with beautiful tasty aromatic tuna so that there was a scent that was going to travel a fairly long distance and lure her in. I also created another audio recording this time of me calling Bella. Isabella. What I discovered over the last couple of days is when I called Bella she did sort of recognize my voice and she did respond but she just wasn't coming to me. She was seeing me physically and panicking. So instead what I did is created an audio recording, set it on loop on my iPad and left it on top of one of the traps. Another night went by, she still wasn't getting into the trap, but she was still around. I was still seeing her every time that I went down. Next morning I went in, still no Bella. And this time, for the first time, I didn't actually see her when I went down to check the traps. So, at that point I needed to check whether she was actually still in the area that she'd been in for the previous few days. So what I did is I got out the night vision camera which I had used previously when I was working full time recovering missing animals. This is a great device, it enables you to take photos or videos of any movement around a trap and it's sufficiently bright that it will actually record at night. So I sat down and started getting this night vision camera set up. While I was doing that I actually popped outside my house, um, it was dinner time for my guys so I went to call them inside and as I was calling them I saw an extra set of eyes and it took me a little while to figure out who it was. I've got several cats who have points like Bella does, so Bella is, if you have a look, Bella's predominantly off-white but she has this beautiful grey face and I have a number of cats here who look very similar. I went through the cats, tried to figure out who it was and suddenly realised it was Bella. She was back at the house. She had navigated back half a kilometre and she'd reappeared and this time she wasn't panicked at all. Um, I popped inside, grabbed some food, put it in a bowl beside her, called her, she spoke back to me and came and ate the food so I was able to simply pick her up and bring her into the house. Now, 
That's a bit of a miracle. It is the first time in seven years of tracking missing animals that I've ever had a cat escape a house as a new resident, travel half a kilometre and then travel safely back. I know that we hear stories in the media of cats traveling miles and miles to return home, but the reality is most cats don't have that inbuilt GPS system. Um, usually they go into absolute panic and they become disorientated and they just go further and further and further away. I was amazed that Bella, having never been outside this house before, had navigated half a kilometer down the road to a local restaurant been seen there over a period of almost a week and then suddenly just turned around and came back home. Um, it was amazing and honestly first time I've ever encountered that. So Bella ultimately brought herself back home which is super exciting but the tools that I used are tools which really do help to bring cats home. The single most important tool that I use in any search is posters and flyers. The reason for that is cats can travel quite a distance, particularly in rural areas. In urban areas less so, they don't go that far at all. But in a rural area, the first thing you need to do is figure out just how far they've gone. And to do that, you need lots of eyes looking for a missing cat and letting you know where they are. Now, I had a sighting of Bella within an hour. I then had other sightings over the few days that I was looking for her and I also had neighbours drive past or walk past while I was searching and every one of them stopped and said, oh have you found your cat yet? They all knew that she was looking and they were all looking out for her. So posters and flyers are really key. When it comes to cats that are scared, too scared for you to just go and pick them up, which is not uncommon even if you've had the cat for years, traps are really important and the humane traps that we use do, do generally work really well. Unfortunately we just had a case with Bella where she hadn't been missing for long enough, she wasn't hungry enough to actually go into the trap. Usually when I use a trap, when I know that it's in the right location and when I know we've got sightings of the cat in that particular area, the cat usually goes into the trap on the first night that we start trapping. But Bella was the exception to that particular rule. Now the tools that I use to track down Bella are just a tiny selection of the tools that I used to use to recover missing animals when I was working as a certified pet detective. The key though is don't rely heavily on social media because most cats are nowhere near most of the people who are on social media. What you really need are flyers and posters distributed in the local area so that you can get as many eyes looking for your cat in your area as possible. I hope you've enjoyed today and I will see you back here tomorrow.